you at least play something Indian, maybe? I mean, if you're gonna do it wrong with it with a song, just it, Christmas is over, mate. It's no point playing Nutcracker. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the leader announcements for the Central Asia region, which includes regions not located in Central Asia at all. But you should have been expecting that. The first region we'll look at is India, where two out of seven leaders are ready to stand the test of time. And the first one is Ranjit Singh with his six. A very tolerant bunch and a very forward thinking man. He proudly carries the light of Nanak, which celebrates every facet of the great religious diversity in his empire. When you're on the battlefield with your brothers, it doesn't matter much anyway what they believe in. Between two worlds, Lahore sits right at the edge between desert rivers and lush greenlands. There's a great deal of riches to be gained in this protected valley, it's almost paradisic. One has to hope the six even bother to move into the outside world. Monks become commanders with the Akali Nihang general, who are not only great strategists, but who will also erect great monuments to their faith. These men are a testimony to the religious tolerance of the six. This tolerance is of course killed with kindness in the Gurdwara, where the complexity of philosophy is celebrated and new perspectives considered, and handled with great rhetoric. Turns out being nice to people will make them more inclined to join your religion. Who knew? India has a second civilization on it, and its leader is Raja Raja the First. And the is it is it Chola or is it Kola? I'm not sure. Let's let's go with Chola, eh? Uh, Raja Raja has the Samian trade guilds at his disposal, whose vast financial power will make trade more profitable and give foreign trade partners a much friendlier inclination. They also sport a fantastic admiralty school, which will surely come in handy. The southern tip of the Indian Peninsula is a great place to build a trade empire from. Access to many coasts and vast waters all round, and lands full of resources to the north, the money and power is sure to flow to and from Kolapuram. The Thalai Thirva is the best type of admiral, an admiral that can fight, and boy is he good at it. Having this one with his fleets, Raja Raja will pack a good punch, and the size of the fists will only increase as his scientists invent new things. Pesky pirates are quickly dealt with by the Kadat Padai, which will make quick work of anything threatening trade, and be a strong wartime vessel also. In Central Asia, two of seven leaders have won, and are already getting ready to be set down on the cylinder. The first of them is... Mithridates the first with his Parthians. A great commander and conqueror, he sure has a shot at winning this thing. Holding the reins of the Persian horde, Mithridates will never run out of horses to keep his army supplied, and those armies will put them to good use. Few things are as scary as a horde of horsemen who know how to fight together. Protected by mountains, but still open to the white plains, the Parthian horsemen will surely be able to roam free. Despite access to the Caspian Sea, there's not much needed for a great navy, meaning more money for more horses. Few riders are as elite as the Griff Panvar, so nimble and smart is he at navigating the battlefield. His training is fantastic as well, and he is beloved by even those he conquers. The fact that he just might be a little slower than his friends doesn't even really matter if he's packing this many advantages. If you want to see a real weapon with horsepower, look no further than the Shiva Tear, who's massively powerful and will shoot his arrows right in your face. Always keeping his options open and always having an escape route, this rider is untouchable. But there's another rider on the store, and his name is Ablai Khan and his Kazakhs, a true hero of the people and a master of political manoeuvring. His people are nomadic pastoralists, so they know how to handle a life on the plains, bringing their own animals to right, eat, and f Located where the plains are getting cold, Turkestan will have access to some good resources and room to expand into what anyone would consider home turf, if you will. Not much will threaten them from the east, and the west is all but ripe for the taking. 
The Tolu Batir Horseman has a best friend, and that best friend is a bloody eagle, the absolute menace of the skies. Tolu Batir always knows where to find what he needs to get back on his feet, and is a formidable fighter as well. Also in Ablai Khan's backpack, the keys which can be erected anywhere and provides great utility for horses as well as good training for those who ride them. They really need to give me sort of what I can read off to know how, how to say these things. I think they're just assuming I spent the last millennia learning languages. Three leaders roam the Great Plains of Siberia. One of them is Vavlio with his Nenet, a wise shaman who understands the struggle for freedom like few others do. The Nenets work to the tune of his Sambadapts, and so do the deer that inhabit the plains. They're attracted to it like magic, and bring with them the cold spirituality of the tundra. Far, far up north by the barren sea lies a city with a nigh unpronounceable name of Nyarvana Mark. It's too cold to be invaded, and it'll surely rule over the northern waters, whatever good that may bring. The hills surrounding it make travel difficult, but they'll also get industry rolling as soon as that comes round. The Taddy Bid speaks to the dear spirits of the plains, and will evangelise with music. It won't produce any pieces for the ages, but that isn't its purpose. Living in the moment and doing good for people today, that's what matters. The Samoyed sled may not be all that strong, but look at those cute doggies! Aren't they the cutest? Aren't they the most adorable sled pullers? And they'll be around for a long time as well! Not to mention they'll serve as great taxis for the Tundra's businessmen. Another civilization of Siberia is the Xiongnu, under Modu Chanyi, a man whose life sounds like a fairy tale prince, but from the old Grimm Brothers fairy tales, not the new Disney ones. They were the first of the eternal blue sky, so they know how to spread across the land and protect their assets too. Being the first to do something means you can take whatever you want, and it's also kind of more enjoyable to be honest. With big wide open spaces all around it, Loot Hot might be a death trap for anyone else, but the City of Dragon is the perfect spot for Modu Chanyu to start out. The area may not be very lush and green, but with this toolkit, he might just make it work. Altaic riders will help the young families looking to settle New Horizons carry some of the heavier items, but they have to be careful when going uphill, cause that cupboard might just fall off and break. When soldiers sit down and gather around the fire, they'll do it in a yurt camp. They might work themselves to the brink of death, but their blood will be a sacrifice for a new generation of brave warriors, and provide a steady stream of reinforcements. And finally for Siberia, we have the Chukchi, under Lautiliwadlin, the sexiest man alive on the cylinder. He quite literally lives where the world ends, and living there has required adaptation. His soldiers work the frosty spoils with unstoppable momentum, and boats know how to navigate the icy waters like no other. Anadir is located incredibly far up north, and has access to a great many waters, vast expanses of land that the Chukchi know how to work with, and potentially a whole new continent to take over. Might be an obscure city at first, but it'll most certainly rise to relevance. The Baidarka can scout cold waters like no other, and fish like an industrial troller too. Entire cities rely on his supplies, and he feeds them well. With the Yaranga, the Chukchi have the perfect structure to exploit a variety of resources. Deer are the lifeblood of the north, and so it trains them for riding. But when by the sea, it provides a great port for all tall tales of weary fishermen. And we now move on to Russia, which has nothing to do with Asia, but here it is anyway. Only 2 out of 12 leaders here have made it, and the first one is… Alaric, with his mighty Goths. Aside from having a bloody cool name, he's one of the greatest leaders to ever walk the earth. He is the Sacker of Rome, and he's learned a lot from that experience. He doesn't care who built the roads, he uses them. And when he sacks those big cities, 
those crown jewels of great empires, oh how his people bask in the glory of their spoils. Arhaimar is just a few steps from the sea, and the salty air of the Crimean Peninsula will make for some great holiday resorts, while their war bands plunder the riches of the Great Plains and surrounding kingdoms. Gad routes are tough, and notoriously thorough in taking everything you've built for years away from you. They're also especially resilient and iron-willed on the battlefield. The Hov is where the Goths go to worship their animals, be they mighty beasts of war or nourishing providers of food. It is built with a philosophy that foot soldiers are better than riders in mind and is conveniently easy to erect. And finally, the much anticipated last leader of Russia, the man we've all been waiting for, Ivan the Terrible with Russia a la Muscovy. He's not quite as terrible as everyone makes him out to be, but he is positively insane. He's still the Tsar of all the Russias, not just some of them, and he'll wreck all of your cities if he only takes one, and his armies will be fresh and ready to fight some more. His people love Ivan so much that they won't mind him destroying entire cities. In fact, they'll celebrate it. Moscow is on the great wide open plains, but not quite, as there are a lot of speed bumps along the way for some added protection. Whether they go for the grasslands of the south, the lush greenery in the west, or the cold north, the Russians are sure to have a strong hand in this game of poker. A simple man once asked Ivan why he invested so much in his streltsies when they're so weak. Ivan bashed his head in with a chair leg and bit off his ear, shouting wildly about roads and about how teamwork gets more work done. Nobody questioned him ever again. In another tirade of this brilliant mind, Ivan emphasized the importance of stopping people from being unhappy over making them happy. To that end, he designed the Sobor, where his citizens are told that expansion is good and in line with the will of God. Of course, we also have nation states around here, two of them to be exact. Afghanistan is the great graveyard of empires, which will be an incredibly hard place to conquer. And Nepal, who have decided to one-up the Khmer by building mountains on their mountains, so their mountains can have more mountains mounted on their mountains. That's it for Central Asia. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Robert the Bruce, hoping to see you all soon. Are we off now? It's no longer live, okay? I'm actually uh, starting to look forward to sitting here talking about this whole mess for the next two, three thousand years. To be fair, this new camera tech is amazing. It's the best. Remember when we had to, to wait for days for the image package to arrive from the field and then it was always late and everybody started rioting? That was, that was pretty terrible. What, what's that up there? What is that? Did you, did you get a new camera installed, Atty? Like, we already had a, have a camera here. It, there's already a camera that, over there. No, wait, that's not... That's not a camera. What is that? 